What up everybody, Ian here. So we have a big one right now. 7,000 milliamps of battery, almost seven inch screen, and more than 7,000 pesos. The POVA 2. I actually remember like 10 years ago, 5-inch phones are considered as phablets. If you haven't heard that term, these are phones in an almost tablet-sized dimension. Now, we don't hear that term any longer. So what do we get from big phones? Because it's bigger, they can use bigger batteries, better cooling implementation, you know, bigger screen. So the bigger it is, the more upgrades they can fit inside. That's why we rarely see flagship devices that are, you know, small or handy. If you see Ultra, Pro, or Max, you bet it's gonna be a big one. So this weighs around 565 grams with the shipper's box. Let me undo the seal here. So we're getting 12 months of warranty plus an additional month, nice. Some manuals, TPU case, free earphones, it's been a while. Then the charging cable, SIM eject tool, then the 18 watt charging brick. And all right, now the phone. So we have Helios G85 processor, 180 hertz touch sampling rate, and 48 megapixel quad AI camera. It's a big, tall phone, eh? Hey? So design, it is actually quite similar to some of Realme's phone. Even the texture and this wavy design thing. I've seen this on the Realme C25. Yeah, tramp stamping here. We see Techno Pova, which is, yeah, it's fine at least. No weird codes can be seen here. And they can't get the color right, like really. Polar silver. It's blue, right? Good thing it's fingerprint resistant. All right, so we see an earphone jack, USB type C port and mic at the bottom, volume rocker and power slash fingerprint scanner on the right side, SIM card tray on the left and nothing on top. You might be wondering where the speakers are. Well, it's built into the earpiece and sorry, it's just one speaker. Oh, by the way, if you like the content that you're seeing here, please click on the like button and the subscribe button and click on the notification bell as well so that you get the buzz every time we release a new review on this channel. Screen is a whopping 6.9 inch IPS LCD at full HD and up to 480 nits in max brightness. Bezels are kept to a minimum except for the bottom one, though I really don't notice it at all. It is quite good when viewing video content, browsing your social media apps. I know it is LCD, but it's not garbage. It's a pretty good one, though I'm not able to find any setting that can tweak how the screen would render the colors, like if it's gonna be vivid, bright, or change the white balance, etc. On games, you can if you dig down in the Game Space app. However, outside of video games, unfortunately, you can't. Viewing angle is not the best, too. I have seen better ones from other LCD IPS display phones on the same uh, price range. Also, I often find myself increasing the brightness while yeah, because my daily driver phone has an AMOLED screen. And another bad news, we only have Widevine level three, so no HD streaming here on Netflix. Really a bummer on a big display phone. This has a MediaTek Helio G85 SoC at 12 nanometers, roughly a similar chip with the Realme C25, which I reviewed in the past. It was actually great on MOBA games and a bit so-so on shooter games. So, you know, let's see and check the data later on this video. By the way, scrolling and navigating on your phone's UI is actually good for a 60 hertz screen. 
they did some really good tweaks here with the animation kind of similar to the animation tweak you usually do under the developer option all right now so let's see how the pova 2 will perform on uh, mobile games so let us start with the MOBA game. So we have Marvel Legends, League of Legends, and Marvel Super War. So this has been a trend for, you know, MediaTek uh, processors, lower mid-tier. They are really good with Mobile Legends and League of Legends. However, on Marvel Super War, you know, I can, I can feel that it is... You know, there are some minor frame drops here and there, but, you know, nothing major that it will affect how you play the game. But yeah, with Mobile Legends, you know, especially League of Legends, these games are well optimized for MediaTek SOCs. Playing them feels like you're playing it on a higher end mobile device. We'll check on that detail later where we compare it to other mobile phones. So, shooter games with Call of Duty on the multiplayer. Average FPS is actually high at 58 and 59. However, the 1% low is, you know, quite far apart. It's not really laggy, though, on some areas or some instances, you'll feel some minor frame drops. Not really the smoothest, but I'm, I'm telling you, you can play call of duty on this phone um now on battle royale you know based on the data here and when i tested it it was actually smooth it was smooth because there weren't really a lot of enemies you know because it's a huge map most of the time it's just the three or the four of you guys so yeah overall i'm, I'm quite pleased with the performance with battle royale now with Asphalt 9, we're getting, you know, almost 30 FPS with 24 or really 25 FPS at 1% low. Yeah, I can say it's smooth. Uh, it's playable, you know, nothing to complain here. But do take in mind that this is the default graphic setting. All right, now Genshin Impact. We are getting 27 frames per second. and an abysmal 7 uh, FPS on uh, the 1% low. So expect frame drops. You can play it if you really want to, but don't expect a smooth experience here. And also the graphic is really going to suffer here because it's on the lowest setting. So don't expect that eye candy effect that you would get from other high-end mobile uh, gaming phones. Also, I noticed that the temperature of the POVA 2, you know, while playing, it is a little bit hot compared to others. Yeah, I noticed that it was hotter compared to the other phones that I've tested in the past. You know, others, it's, it's like body temperature, right? But this one, you'll be getting temperatures of more than 40 degrees. Nothing extreme, you know, I just want to let you know about this thing but it doesn't really affect the performance of the phone now mobile legends so we're going to be comparing this to other mobile phones as well on the same tier and of course some higher end phones yeah comparing it to real me c25's g70 yeah I, I can say that it is smoother it's a better gameplay and specs wise it's a better phone. B11 Lite, almost twice the price as well. So you'll be getting that almost 60 FPS and a higher 1% low. And yeah, here are the mid-tier to high-end phones. Not really high-end. You know, these are like the 10,000, 15,000 peso phone. So they're really acing. What can I say? Yeah, for like 7,000 pesos... You can have a buttery smooth experience with playing Mobile Legends. You know, if, if you can just look at the data, it's like really close to playing it on, on like a Poco X3 Pro or a Pro Poco F3. You know, it, it, it is really good. You know, if, if you're really into Mobile Legends, yeah, this phone will satisfy your needs. 
So this has a quad camera starting at 48 megapixel on the main sensor, 2 megapixel macro lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and an AI sensor. Photos taken from the POVA 2 is highly detailed. Even if you zoom in from your phone, you wouldn't see any pixelation. Colors look natural. Images are sharp. You know, decent dynamic range. It's very good. The 48 megapixel sensor has up to two times digital zoom as well. Selfie camera is no good for me. It's having a hard time getting good light. Even with the f2.0 aperture, it just struggles. Even on well exposed areas, selfie appears soft, uh, blurred, flax detail. You know, the cool eye tracking feature and the selfie flash camera doesn't even help at all in improving the quality of the photos. Charging this phone from 0% to 100% will take you three hours and 19 minutes you know, based on my test. On my usage, mostly I have productivity apps, you know, like I manage my online stores, you know, browse the internet, browse on Facebook, and check my email. This can easily give me two full days of battery life without charging. It's a 7,990 pesos mobile phone with great specifications, but sadly they have cut some big corners here. To name them again, no HD on Netflix, not the best viewing angle for LCD, you know, no additional display options, no wide angle lens, poor speaker output, poor performing selfie camera. And if you're one of those who uses those functions, then this might not work well for you. So conclusion, the main selling point of this phone is the big battery, the big screen, the great camera, you know, not the selfie one, and the partnership with Mobile Legends. So if you really want a phone with long battery life and you love Mobile Legends and you're not really into selfie cameras, this phone might work for you. I like it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ian here again, and I'll be seeing you on the next video. My daughter kind of wanted me to do that, so.